Um, before we go too far into it, I want to cover a couple of ideas, uh, partly things I wish I'd known when I started learning, and also just to try and explain that it's not really like a right or a wrong way of doing anything. Um, Blender is wherever you want it to be. So here's a scene that I'm working on at the moment, this car model that I'm making, and I've been working on this for days because if you look, it's loads of curved surfaces, it's loads of flowing lines, and that kind of thing for me is really hard to do in 3D. And if I zoom in and look at a part of this model, you can see that it's made up of all of these shapes. And as you'll know from maths and geometry, like any shape that has more than two sides is called a polygon. So a triangle is a polygon, and we've got a triangle anywhere on here. I've got sort of a triangle there. Um, we've got rectangles. Everything is made up of these shapes. And the computer can then turn those into nice curves. But if you look, you can see that there are literally millions of polygons making this up. So that's why these objects take me so long to make. But I also want to show you another car that I've made. Which is this one. And... You can see, just by looking at it, that it's made up of much simpler shapes, like it doesn't have the curves. But you can still see that it's a car, and I really like working in this style. It's kind of cartoony, and I can work really quickly. And it maybe takes me half a day to make something like this, whereas something like the other model, that could take me days or even weeks. So this, I find, is a much easier and much faster way of working. And it's like having a pen and paper. Like, you can make anything you want, with a pen and paper. Sometimes you just want to do a quick sketch. Sometimes you want to do this beautiful, complicated drawing. But there's no right or wrong answer. And when you're starting out, the best thing to do is to learn to make lots of things kind of quickly and then move on to the next thing. So don't want you to get kind of too hung up on producing amazing art. And you'll look at other people's work and it'll look incredible. And they've been doing it for years, decades in some cases. I've been doing this for nearly 20 years now. So... I want to teach you like the simple ways to get fast results and to make the things that you want to make. And it's more important to learn the techniques to make the things that you might want to make than learning to just copy other people's work. So a uh, boring introduction out of the way. Let's, let's make something. Okay, so we're going to go to File and New if you're already in Blender. So I'll file a new and don't save because I don't want to save that. And that should take us to here. Let's also just quit this and let's go. Or maybe you're just starting Blender again. And in which case it looks like this. Okay, so I'm going to click off and we should, either way, we should have the default cube. I'm just going to turn on my screencast keys so you can see what mouse buttons I push and what keys I push. Okay, and I'm just going to use the middle mouse button to scroll around the cube. And you remember from the last lesson that we did, when we made the robot's face, we kind of picked up one part of this cube and we pushed it in to make like the details of his head. So if you remember how to do that, we're going to click on the object so it's highlighted and then we're going to push the tab key and you can see it says toggle edit, tab, toggle edit mode. And then we're going to click up here and choose this one, select mode face and click off. And then we're going to click on one of the faces, the one facing me. Okay, and it should just highlight this square. And then we're going to hit the I key for the inset. And we're just going to move our mouse in. Let's go to about there. And if you look in the bottom left hand side, there's this little menu. This is inset faces with an arrow. And if you click on this, we can expand it out. And then we can adjust the thickness there as well by clicking on the number and dragging it. Or we could type in a number. So three. Let's go for that. And then we're going to hit the E key. And you'll see that this blue line comes up. So already locking it to our Z axis. So I hit the E key, and then if I move my mouse towards me, to the, right, the left, it pokes out, and if I move it the other way, it pokes back through. So let's move it to about here and click. And then we're gonna do exactly the same thing again. We're gonna practice this. We're gonna hit I and move it in, and I'm gonna left click to apply it, and then we're gonna hit the E key for extrude. So extruding is either pulling out or pushing in a face. So let's push this one in. And then let's do it one more time. So we're going to hit I and then hit E and click. And if we look around, we've made this kind of 3D shape. 
So we're going to click off anywhere on the screen and let's select the top face. And we're going to do exactly the same thing. So hit I, add inset, and sometimes it doesn't let you move it the way you want. So that's where this box down here comes in useful. So let's make this more. And we're going to hit E, and we're going to push the mouse up, and then click. And then we're going to inset with the I key, and let's just make a tiny little one on top. So already we're starting to make some weird shapes. And let's click off and choose the side, and then hit the E key and pull it out like this. And this time, rather than hitting I, we're going to hit S to scale. And then let's do something like this. And then hit E and hit S to scale again. And we're going to do oh, spin a bit fiddly again. So we're going to keep moving the mouse until we get the result we want. You just need to be patient. And uh, let's do that. And then we can hit the G key. And if we hit G at the moment, it's it's too loose. Like we don't have full control over it. So we want to use the axes that we had before. So remember that the red axis is the X key. If you look in the top corner. And then it's locked it to that. So we can push it to like this. So we've made a weird shape. And okay, this might not be the kind of thing that you want to make. But it shows you that we can take a cube and we can turn it into a more complicated shape. And we can just keep using the tab key to go in, selecting faces, insetting them with the I key, extruding them with the E key, and scaling them with the S key. And it's really easy to remember because all of those shortcuts are the same as the thing that they do. I think that sentence makes sense. So E to extrude, S to scale it, I to inset it, and you can keep going and making these odd shapes. So just have a little play around and a practice with that. And if we want to get rid of it, we can go to Object and Delete. And we could make another cube. So Mesh, Cube. So Shift A, Mesh and Cube. Let me show you the other way of doing that. So Delete. We can go to Object. So we're going to Add, Mesh, Cube. And then hit Tab key, click off, and make sure we've got this face here selected. And then we can start again. So I to Inset. E to extrude, S to scale, I to insert, E to extrude, S to scale. And the more you practice this, the faster you'll get at it. And it'll become really natural and you'll just be making these weird shapes. Insert. And for some reason, Blender's not let me do it the way that I want. So I'm going to use the thickness slider there. And then let's scale it and insert. You want to make sure you don't cross over. You can see it's crossed over there, so we don't want that. We want to make sure we're doing it like that. And so have a little play around and practice that. And then we're going to get rid of this object because we don't need it for today's lesson. So object and delete. Okay, so let's start with something that isn't a cube. Now let's add in a circle. So you remember that we can zoom in and out with the magnifying glass up there. We can move around with the hand. So let's zoom in and we can see that this is made of lots of edges, lots of straight lines, rather than being a completely smooth circle. And that helps us with our modeling. Okay, so if you remember, we hit the tab key now. And this time we want to select the edge face, which is the middle one. And if I click off and then click back on, I can choose these individual edges, which is great but not what we need right now. So we're going to select all of them again. So if we go to select and all, and you'll see that the shortcut for that was A, because it's next to it, but we're going to go select and all. So we've got everything selected now. And then if we hit E this time, you'll see that it's completely loose. So we want to lock it to the up and down, which if we look in the top right-hand corner here, is the Z, the Z. I'm very sorry, I'm English, and I have obviously watched too many Americans on YouTube. The Z button, and so we can move it up and down, and we can make this kind of cylinder. But we want it just here. Let's have something like this. And then I'm just going to use my magnifying glass to zoom out. And then we're going to hit E again. And this time, we're just going to click the mouse button. And then hit the S key. And you can see it's scaling it out now. And I just want to move this up slightly. So it's still going to have this edge selected. So I hit the G key and then the Z key. 
And if you move it up, you can see we can make this kind of bowed, curved shape. So something like this. And let's hit the E key again. And this time we're going to hit Z to move it up. And then we're going to hit the S key. And can you see what we're trying to make here? I'm going to hit the E key one more time and hit the Z key. And let's go like that. And we're just going to hit S and scale it very slightly out. So we're starting to make a plate shape. But what about this gap here? Because the only thing you could eat on this at the moment is a donut that is bigger than the plate. And I don't have one of those. So we want to select all of these edges. Now we could hold the shift key and click each one by hand. But we want to work faster than that. So instead we're going to hit the Alt key and then click on the gap in between these edges. So just on that line there and it'll select everything. And then if we hit E and click and then hit S, we can scale it in like this to about there. Now we're going to hit G and Z and move it down very slightly. And then we just want to fill this in. So remember how all of our shortcuts were kind of like the letters that we needed to start the word? If we hit F now, it will fill that. So we've got a plate. So we're now going to hit tab to go back into object mode. And we're going to do the same thing that we did last time to color it in. So and to give it a material. So we're going to go up here and choose viewport shading. Third one along. And we're going to click on the materials button down here. And we're going to click on new. And the first thing we're going to do is give our material a name. So we're going to call it plates. And try to put the lock on so it seems like I'm shouting. I'm going to turn that off. And then we are going to give this a color. So you just click on base color and I'm going to make it like a light pink. And then if I click back on here and push the tab key, you can see all of the different parts that make this up. And I can, if I go back to face, I can select each face. So what we could do with this is we could make this part a different color. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to go over here and hit plus button to make a second material. And you can see it's now blank again. So we're going to hit new and I'm going to go space color and I'm going to make it a kind of darkish blue. And let's give it a name. It's important to name everything because when you get really good at Blender, you'll have 200 objects and 500 materials and don't be like me and not name stuff because you'll never find it again. Okay, so at the moment, nothing's happened. But if I hit the Assign button, you can see that we've now made that part blue. Now I could go around and select each face and select the right material, but I'm going to try and select some more quickly. So if you hold down the Shift key, and click around. And I know this is a bit boring, but it has to be done. And you can use the middle mouse button to move around and the hand key. Make sure you click shift before you start clicking again, otherwise you'll lose what you selected. So I've let go of everything. I'm going to hit the shift key and click again. I'm going to keep going go up. So if that happens, you can go to edit and undo. And we're going to keep going. I did that on purpose so you can see what happened. And then we're going to select plate blue and hit assign. And then hit tab key. And we've got a plate with a little blue highlight, a new blue ring on it. Okay, so another useful tool is in over here, just like we named the material, we should name the object because you can see it's just called it circle. If I double click on it, it'll now say rename and I can type in plate. And if you look to the right, we've got these two buttons, it's a camera and an eye. And you don't need to worry about the camera. But if I click the eye, it disappears. And you haven't deleted it, it's just vanished from the shot. So that's a good way of organizing because again, remember on the car that I showed you at the start, that's got over 500 objects and I need to hide things as I'm working on them. So we've got a plate. So let's click off our plate for now. What goes well with a plate that we could make with similar shapes? I'm going to make a cup. I know, it's very exciting. So we're going to use the shortcut to add. So Shift and A, and we're going to do exactly the same process. I'm going to make a circle. And that's kind of looking like the right size. So we're going to hit tab to go in. And then we're going to go up here and make sure that we've got edge select chosen. And then we're going to hit E and Z to move it up. 
click to about there and then hit S and I'm going to scale it out. I'm going to hit E and Z and go up again to about there. It's kind of a cup high. Now you might feel that you've gone too far up and if that happens, I hit G and Z and move it down. Maybe it's more that sort of coffee cup size. Okay, and then we're gonna we want to select all of this bottom ring again. So click off, hold down the Alt key, and then click on one of these edges, and it'll select. If it selects something by mistake you don't want, you can either click again with the Alt key held down, or just click off and then go back again. Okay, so we're gonna hit E and S to scale it in, and then we're gonna hit F for fill. Okay, so we've got a basic coffee cup shape, but this part is really thin and if you look at an actual coffee cup it's got like a thickness to it so let's hold down the alt key and click on this edge and i'm just going to move its hand so it's more in the center again hit the g key and then the s key and we can create this edge okay and then we're going to hit e and z and we're going to i do want to move it down but i can't see what i'm doing now so i'm going to click the right mouse button and then rotate so i can see the bottom of the cup Let's try again, E and Z. I'm going to move it down until, and you see here, you can see that that yellow line disappears because it's pushing through the other shape we've got. So we're going to push through the shape and then we're going to move it back up a little bit. And then we're just going to hit F. So we've got a base to our cup now and you can see we've got this completely 3D object. Okay. So let's hit the tab key and give this a material. So hit the new button. And I'm going to call this cup material. And let's change the base color to like an orangey red, like this. Okay, and then we're going to move up here, double click, and call it cup. Okay, so now I want to move my cup out of the way because I want to keep working in this central part. So if we go to our move tool, and then we can just drag it over like this. And it's important to make sure that you are in object mode, which is what we're in at the moment. I just undo this and we are in this edit mode that we're in before where we can select a face and we could maybe select multiple faces. If I then move using the move tool, it's just going to move those faces, which can give you some cool effects, but it's not what we're trying to do right now. So I'm just going to undo all of this. If you ever get stuck, ever make a mistake, control Z to undo or edit and undo up there. So we're back in object mode and that you can tell that we're in the object mode because the whole thing is highlighted. So I tap to get back to that, and then we're just going to move it out of the way for now. Okay, so remember how we have this circle in the center? I'm just going to move over like this. This is where our object's created. We're going to make one more circle. And I want to scale this down. So we need a handle for our cup. Let's just scale it down a bit more. And the problem that we've got is that if we make a handle we're going to, have to make the top half and the bottom half and we want them to be exactly the same so the easiest way to do that is to add a modifier so we did this on the robot before we used a bevel modifier to make him a bit softer in the head to make his head a bit curvier and we can do the same thing using something called a mirror modifier so we're going to click on the spanner for modify the way i try and remember that is like you use a spanner to modify a machine so i always remember that one and then click on the Add Modifier button and search. Now, Mirror comes up for me straight away because I use it a lot. It might not be there for you, in which case type in M-I-R and Mirror should start to come up. Okay, and then we have our axes here and we want to mirror on the Z axis. So if we click on that, nothing's going to happen. But if we then go into Tab Mode, into Object Edit Mode, and make sure we've got the edge selected, and then we hit our old friend Extrude, and then Z, you can see that as it moves up, it's also moving up from the bottom. Now, I think at the moment, this is going to be quite a thick handle for our coffee mug. So before we extrude, let's undo that with Control and Z and just hit the S key and we're going to scale it down some more. Okay, so let's have another go. I'm going to hit D and then Z. That kind of looks more like the right size. Okay, and then... Remember on the robot, we use these tools here to be able to view from the side. So I want to view from this side. So keep clicking until your screen looks like mine. And 
we are going to go to the tab mode, back into object mode, and we're going to move our object, our handle up. And we don't need to worry about anything else just yet. Let's just use this so we can see the size of our cup, and then hit tab. And it should still have this edge selected. If it isn't, move your mouse and remember that you can click here. And then we're going to go back to this view and zoom out a bit. It can be really fiddly, but it'd be worth it. And then we're just going to move this down. And then we're going to hit E. And we're not going to push Z this time. We're going to move it to about here. So it's just offset. And then we're going to hit R and rotate it. And then we're going to do the same thing again. E and rotate it, and I'm sure you can see what we're doing here. We're just going to move it a little bit more, and I'm going to hit E and rotate it one more time until it's at 90 degrees. Well, and I've gone too far there, so if I undo it and then hit R again, so Control Z to undo it and then R. There we go. And if we move back to the 3D mode, you know, I don't think that's too bad. So we're going to hit tab to go back into our object mode and the whole object selected now and then it's a little bit too big so we're going to hit s and then move this green arrow and boom connect it onto our cup and the last thing to do is to choose the material and make it the cup material and you know i think you need a little hand to drink from this cup but i've got little hands so it's okay so that's not a bad little cup we've made, and uh, let's uh, give it a name before we forget. So make sure you've got your handle selected, and then I'm going to double click, and we're going to call this cup handle. And I'm going to hide it for now, and we're going to click and bring back our plate. And what I want to do now is click on our plate and just move it to the side. And let go and then we're going to hit shift and a to add a new object and we're going to choose circle again this is our last circle i promise we're nearly done and then we're going to hit the r key and the x key and we're going to rotate it until it's at 90 degrees now that looks like it's at 90 degrees but if we go up to the bottom here we can actually type in 90. and then we're going to apply our mid mirror modifier try saying that quickly so click on the spanner, go to mirror, go to add modifier and then search. And it should be there, but if it's not, type in mirror again. Okay, and this time, I think we want it on the Y, but I've been wrong before. So we're going to hit the tab key, make sure that we've got this selected. Then we're going to hit E and we're going to move it on the Y. And you can see that it's not mirroring. So once again, I'm wrong. Let's keep going. Let's move it to about here. And then let's click back and click off of our axes on the Y and see what happens when we click X. Nope, turn that off. There we go, so it's on the Z. I don't know why. Sometimes these things happen, and I'm sure there's an explanation, but let's not worry about it. With Blender, often you just need to click things until it does what you want. And then we go to the top view, and we're going to keep this view. I'm just going to zoom out a little bit more and move it down. And let's hit the G key again. And now we know that we're working with the green arrow, so that's the Y. And we're just going to move it out like this. And then just hit the S key, very slightly scale it down. And then I want to hit the R key and rotate it just a tiny bit. Then we're going to hit go, we're going to get into a little rhythm now. So we're going to hit E and move it down the screen. Don't worry about it crashing into the plate upstairs. We will sort that later. Click and then hit S and then give it a very slight rotation. And then we're gonna hit G so we can move it. Can you work out what we're making yet? Hit the E key again, and then hit S to scale it, G to move it, and R to rotate it, G to move it. So we're just kind of very slowly positioning everything where we need it to be. Let's do it one more time. Hit E, and then hit S. And it's being weird, there we go. And if it ever, makes a weird shape like this just click off hit control and z to undo and have another go and you'll find that it probably does what you need this time just blender being blender okay i think we're about that let's do it one more time for good luck so extrude scale give it a very slight rotation and if i turn my 3d camera now 
can see we've kind of made a croissant. Croissants? Qu croissant? Something like that. Which completes our scene. So let's, we've got this exposed face here at the moment. You can see that it's not filled. So we're going to hit Alt and clicking that gap and then hit F and zoom back out again. And that's looking pretty good. But if you look at a croissant, it's almost got like a step effect on it. And if we look at these edges at the moment, by going in with the tab key, it's doing everything we want, but it would be really useful to have some more edges in here, but we've already made the shape, so there's nothing we can do. Although, of course there is, because if we hit Control and R now, it's going to make a ring in that space. And if we then click and move the mouse, we can slide it anywhere in that space there. So let's push it all the way to the edge, and it won't let you go past it, and then move it back a bit. So it's about there, and then just scale it in very slightly. And already we're starting to get more of that like croissant effect. So let's hit Control and R, and then whichever area you're in, it will try and put a ring in the middle part of it. So you want this one, so we're just going to move it over, and then we're going to hit S, And then let's do it for here. So we click and then you can slide it to here. And um, one more up here. Click and then scale it down. And if we tab out, you know, that's not a bad looking croissant. It's a little bit big maybe, so we're going to hit S and just scale the whole up down. And let's give it a material. So who knows what color a croissant is? Um, Maybe like a brownie yellow. Something kind of goldeny, something like that, I think. And um, we're gonna name it. So you're on your own spelling croissant. I think it's like that. C O C R O I S S A N T. And we're gonna name our material as well. C R O I S S A N T material. And let's move that onto our plate. So we're going to move it like this. And you can see it's kind of crashing into our plate. So we're going to move it up. And we're going to hit S to scale it down a bit. And move it over. And move it back. And keep pushing it down until it starts cutting to the plate. And then maybe we will rotate it as well. So we're going to hit the R key and then the Y key. Or you could use the rotate tool up here. And do the same thing. Okay, so we've got a cross on our plate, and I just like because I'm arty, I'd like to have it slightly rotated the other way as well. So let's use the move tool like that. And let's bring back our cup and the handle. And they're sat on top of our croissant. So if we click on the cup body and then we click hold down the shift key and click on the handle, and then make sure we've got the move tool selected, we can move it out of the way. And let's just finish our scene. So you remember that I like to make a little plane, a little stage for it to be on. So a plane is just a square. And we hit the S key to scale it out. And you can see it's kind of into our plate. So let's just move it down slightly. And let's move it a bit more over. And then we're just going to click on the material, click on new, and we'll call this table. And let's give it Let's go for, I like pink today. Let's go for another pink, but let's put the roughness really low. So it's kind of reflective. And one last trick, if you remember, we go to this camera, the render button, and we turn on ray tracing, and now you can see our cup reflected. So I've made this a really nice little breakfast scene, and if you want to change any of the color settings, you can just click on the cup. And the material's already selected, and we could make the cup. Maybe not pink, so we've got a lot of pink, but we can make it blue. So have a play around with this, change your materials, try and make it some other breakfast things. If anyone can make a Danish pastry, I'll be really impressed because that's the best pastry. And in the next lesson, I'm going to teach you how to create an image that you can actually save out and share. But don't forget to save your work and have fun making some more breakfast bits.